We were driving my friend's really old beat up Subaru through a massive graveyard. We stopped and we walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black and we couldn't make out any features other than the fact that it looked like a human who was wearing some old style top hat. We stupidly waved and shouted, hi. He didn't show any acknowledgement and continued sitting still on the rock. All of a sudden, he jumped to his feet, started running at us on the water and then vanished into thin air about halfway on the pond. My friend and I screamed and ran back to the car. The car wouldn't start and we heard something banging on the back of the car. It wasn't a constant bang, but every few seconds or so we'd hear it. Nobody was outside from what we could see in the dark, but something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come give us a boost, but I had no service. None of us had any cell service. The next 30 minutes were spent trying to get her car started. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Finally, the car started and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast, immediately crossing the gates all of our phones regained service. One thing I know for certain is that someone or something was out there, and it was not an animal or a human. I was driving across country with my mom and sister when I was 16 and my sister was 20. It was late, but we were well rested, still and alert. We were driving along an interstate and needed gas and a bathroom break. So we stopped at the only rest stop in 200 miles. There was a van full of teenagers on a road trip at the gas station, as well as a small gray parked car at the pump in front of us with two young men standing outside of it. When we got there, everything felt wrong. We'd been on the road for days and seen many rest stops at night and had never been afraid until then. My mom and sister went inside and I stayed in the car. I heard the teenagers say they were creeped out and couldn't get the pump to work and they left in a hurry. I was watching the car in front of us and the two men had not moved at all, not an inch. They weren't talking, they weren't on phones, they were just standing still, still as a stone. My sister and mom came running back out to the car, and when they got in, the two men slowly turned to look at us, while not moving or pivoting the rest of their bodies, and I swear to fucking shit, we all saw the same thing. They had eyes dark as pitch and empty, truly empty. Not black, not reflecting any light, just a void. We sped out of there and didn't stop until we were in the next city. The worst thing about the entire experience? We couldn't find the place on a map. We knew exactly which spot on the interstate to look and we couldn't find it on Google Maps or any paper map we had. We even asked the locals about the creepy gas station out on that stretch of road and got only confused looks. We've traveled on that interstate since and there is no rest stop. I'm a psychiatric nurse, and early in my career, I worked at a residential mental health facility. One of our residents was an elective mute, which means that he didn't, couldn't, and wouldn't talk, but there was no medical reasons as to why. He had spoken earlier in his life and in fact seemed quite normal back then, with the exception of being close to seven feet tall. He'd been raised in the deep south and joined the military when he was 19 but one night, he vanished. Ten years later, a seven-foot-tall man walked into a VA hospital emergency room in my part of the Midwest and said to the receptionist, My name is Marion Duchesne, and I've been dead for ten years. Those were the last words he ever spoke. 
He was covered with dust, and he was wearing the same clothes he'd been reported to be wearing the night he vanished. His social security number had not been used and he had no identification on his person. However, they were able to identify him, I guess via fingerprints. The family was notified, but they said they had already grieved their lost man and that whomever was claiming to be him simply could not be. They demanded not to be contacted again. Marion paced all day every day, moving his mouth that looked like talking or muttering, but no sound came out. He had an unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if he were laughing heartily, but not even a breath could be heard. If I talked to him, he appeared to listen, periodically throwing his head back in that laughter-mimicking way of his. Various medications were tried, but they did not affect him, either positively or negatively. Occupational therapy did nothing because Marion would just grin, and unless told to stay put, he'd get up and start pacing again. On my last day at the job, the last thing I saw was Marion, pacing in the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wondered if all along I'd been dealing with a ghost. All these years later, I still don't know. Shortly after college, I got married. We immediately moved into a basement apartment because that's all that was available within our budget. This place had a poltergeist, and my wife and I were terrified. Whatever resided there with us made it clear it wanted to live alone. Dishes, glasses, and other items would fly off the shelves. My wife was hit several times. There was always an ominous feeling like we were being watched. At night, when we walked through the apartment in the dark, there would be insanely bright flashes of light that would illuminate the entire room. One night, while we were going to bed, as soon as my wife and I walked into the bedroom, we heard a voice from nowhere say, Move. My wife looked at me. I looked at her. I said loudly, You got it, bud. We moved out two days later and stayed with family. The old lady who owned the place died a few months later, and the house was torn down. It is still an empty lot to this day. Nothing but grass and a tree. I still drive by it every now and again. My dad used to work as a corrections officer at a rural prison. He drove the perimeter of the property for his entire shift, where he would check empty buildings for runaway inmates. It was generally a boring job. One night, my dad was parked on a hill reading a magazine when he started to feel a thumping in his body. He described it as the feeling you get when speakers are playing a song with really heavy bass. He put the magazine down and checked his rearview mirror where he saw someone outside the truck. He grabbed his pistol and jumped out of the truck with his weapon drawn. Outside the truck he realized it was a procession of Native Americans walking through the truck and directly through his seat, only to disappear at the exact spot he was sitting. He said it was clear they were ghosts because many of them had appeared injured. This went on for a few seconds and then the whole procession disappeared. He called the other perimeter guy on his walkie to try and explain. The other guy almost immediately stopped communicating. Turns out the other guy had seen this happen before, but didn't believe in ghosts, so he didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> 